We've got a scam warning for you this morning. It's called ghost tapping and it's draining people's bank accounts without their knowledge. And for more on this and how you can protect yourself is tech expert Carmi Levy. Carmi, good morning to you. Good morning, guys. Good to be with you. Yeah, great to see you. Okay, this scam targeting people that use their wireless device to pay for things. So let's just start with a basic definition. What exactly is ghost tapping, Carmi? So you're out and about and uh, someone, a stranger approaches you, might bump you from behind uh, and what they're looking for is your credit card or even your debit card in your pocket or your phone. Uh, they're using the, the close in tap to pay feature, which you would normally use by sort of tapping on a point of sale terminal. They're using it with, without your knowledge, trying to make small transactions, uh, again, without your permission. Or you could be out holiday shopping, uh, you, you're at a festival, a market or something, you, you pay for something. And uh, instead of charging what you expect to be charged, they don't show you the receipt, they rush you through the process and the number ends up being far larger. So it could be a known transaction, could be an unknown transaction, takes advantage of the fact that this is really convenient, doesn't require a password, doesn't require authentication before you know it, you've been had. Yeah, so this is really concerning. I mean, unlike traditional card scams, this one doesn't require your, require your card or your PIN number and can happen anywhere. That's the thing is is we're trading convenience for security or we're giving up some security for that convenience. It's fast. It's quick. We pay. We, we move on our way. But of course, it means that if someone takes advantage of that gets within that it's about a 10 centimeter range that this near field communication or nfc radio works so someone can get within that 10 centimeters they can initiate a purchase without permission without authentication so yeah it's convenient but it comes with a risk if somebody gets within that range okay so how do i know if i've been a ghost tapped uh, carmy are there any warning signs yeah, I mean, you will notice if you look at your transaction logs, you will see small, so often small transactions. They'll test it to see if it works and then they'll try more afterwards. So watch your transaction logs carefully. You might get uh, an emergency transaction alert if you set that up in your app. Uh, you'll get that on your phone or any connected device. So watch for those. They happen in real time. You should activate them. Uh, and you'll also notice some suspicious charges on your account as well. Uh, again, or even if it was a known account, you knew that you went to that that vendor at the festival, for example, and you bought something, but you expected it to be ten dollars, and instead it's a hundred and twenty. So watch those numbers too. Not all, not everything is adding up. Okay. Um, there's also a blocking wallet, right? Yeah, they call them RFID uh, pouches or sleeves or wallets. And basically what it is is RFID stands for radio frequency ID, and it has carbon fiber or aluminum or some other metal in it. You put your credit card in the RFID wallet or you put your phone in the RFID pouch, and it blocks radio waves from reaching them. So if it's in your pocket in that sleeve, even if someone tries to bump you, they won't be able to communicate with the card or the phone. Uh, that ghost tap never happens. Yeah, I got, I think, one on the back of my wall. Is this an example here, Carmi? This is the uh, the Apple wallet. Would it block? Uh, I'm. It has no. to be explicitly RFID. It has to be an explicit okay. RFID device. So you'll want to make absolutely sure that it has that capability built into it. The good news is you can get it from pretty much any vendor or shop online, and they're pretty inexpensive. I call it cheap insurance. Okay, I'm going to uh, stop carrying my uh, cards on the back of my phone. <laughs> Doesn't seem like a good policy. Keep, keep, exactly. Keep them in front. Make sure you're aware of it. Back pocket or kind of an external bag where you can't control it. Uh, that is always a risk when you're out in crowds. All right. Just finally, are there some other ways that you can uh, protect you and your money? Yeah, so set two-factor authentication or biometrics on your transaction so that you have to provide, say, facial ID or a fingerprint. Uh, you can use single-use or virtual card numbers, uh, very popular at holiday time. Uh, most banks and credit card processors offer that capability. Uh, you can also set lower spending limits on your, on your uh, account so that even if you are victimized, the dollar amounts won't be all that high. Uh, and you can, if you want, just turn off tap to pay entirely, go back to using chip readers and pins. A little less convenient, a little more secure. All right. Carmi, we're going to have to leave it there. Um, Eye-opening, to say the least. I've got some work to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so do I. <laughs> I think we all do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Carmi. Thanks, guys.